everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're having a look at another dead blog for Update Fire and Ice, and this is for a premium US destroyer which is coming in. There's also going to be some changes to another premium destroyer, so we'll go through that as well. Uh, this vehicle is the USS Frank Knox. It's going to be coming in at rank 3, and as I said, going to be a premium. It's a gearing class destroyer, so very similar to the USS gearing that we have in the tech tree, and hopefully will give people an opportunity to be able to grind through some of the American naval stuff. America probably has the strongest naval tree when it comes to the sum of its parts, and also, in the future, it still has, even after all of the addition, the most room for expansion. So therefore, getting in on the ground early ain't too bad of an idea. Let's get into the history of this vehicle. The gearing class destroyers were a further development of the Fletcher class ships, the most massively produced and successful class of American World War II destroyers. In order to increase fire efficiency, and improve air defense capabilities, the Allen M. Sumner class was developed with twin mounts of universal main guns, improved rudders, and reinforced anti-aircraft artillery. When the construction of a new class of destroyers was in progress, it was decided to increase the length of the ship's hull by inserting an additional section in the central part, which significantly increased the fuel tank capacity and also slightly improved the destroyer's speed performance. The improved Sumner class received its own name, Gearing. In total, 98 destroyers were built of the 158 ordered. One of them, the USS Frank Knox, was commissioned in 1944, took part in the Battle of Okinawa, then the Korean War, and also the war in Vietnam. After decommissioning from service in 1971, the ship was transferred to the Hellenic Navy, where she received the new name, Themistocles. The destroyer was in service with the Greek Navy until the early 90s. In 2001, she became a target for torpedo fire from the Nereus submarine and sank. Before we get into the features of the Frank Knox, the changes to the USS Moffat, which is the other premium at rank 3 for America, are quite significant. So the cost of the ship is being increased from 1300 to 1750 GE, and the research points multiplier will be increased from 272% to 308%. So this basically means if you want to own a USS Moffat, it might be worth doing it now. Then again, just remember that there is a 50% sale coming up, and the Moffat should be part of it, as long as they don't class this, as a as, as a new version of it, I suppose, uh, then it won't be able uh, to be 50% off. So you're going to have to kind of make the decision. Do you want to pick it up now, um, or do you want to hope that it's 50% off in the next few weeks? Whatever happens, the USS Moffat is changing. So, uh, yeah, simple as that. Hopefully this means less uh, botted accounts will play it, um, but who knows? Anything is possible nowadays. So the Frank Knox joins a ton of different US destroyers which all have similar characteristics and all are pretty good. Uh, even when stuff like it was just the Somers and then the Sumner and of course the Porter came in, it was very obvious that because of certain ideas that the Americans had that their destroyers were going to be incredibly strong in the game. And uh, the, the uh, Frank Knox is no different. The main thing that's going to be good at this is the fire rate of the main guns. It has six 127mm Mark 12 guns. Uh, these are in three turrets, so two on the front, one on the back. And they're just going to be able to put out a ton of firepower. Um, if you've ever used any of these American destroyers, you know how good the firepower is and you know how much of a kind of blanket of fire you can put into the place. And that's what's really, really nice about these general vehicles. They're just able to continuously bully whatever is in front of them. They can continuously fire 
over and over and over again. And as long as you've got good repair skills, if people are firing back at you, then you can always get more fire on the enemy than they can on you. Therefore, you do more damage to them. Therefore, they fall apart quicker. At the same time, as a secondary load, uh, this thing has a lot of AA armament. So it has a bunch of 40 millimeters, 12 of them, in fact, and then also has 11, 20 millimeters on top of it. Now, I've personally recently having been, been having a few issues with my AA guns actually doing anything but uh, if they do something on this thing they will just annihilate whatever's around it won't just be good against smaller machines such as boats but also of course good against aircraft so this should uh, be really really nice in that regard at the same time it also has two sets of torpedoes so it'll have 10 in total since it's five per individual slot uh, this is great for covering areas uh, that people are coming through. In I play Naval Arcade, so you get torpedo reloads. So the more torpedoes means the more area you can cover. Um, while, you know, uh, I basically use them to kind of like uh, take over choke points and then push forward with it, right? Like that's that's the idea. So you choke off one area with torpedoes and then you push for the other one and be able to use your guns. The main difference though between this and some of the tech tree destroyers for America is its survivability. Its guns are pretty decent, it doesn't have the best AA armament, but it's obviously good enough, it's still a lot. Um, but when it comes to its armor, it actually has 19 millimeters instead of 12. Now this may not seem like it makes too much of a difference, but when a lot of people are just slinging HE at you, um, it can make a decent amount of difference just having those slight extra pieces of armor on the machine. The other thing as well is it has the largest crew of any of the other American destroyers, 336 members, which is kind of nuts. And if you don't know, in naval, crew basically equals like HP. So as long as you have enough of a percentage of a crew, you can repair the vehicle, you can uh, help it float again, you can also uh, extinguish its fire. But once you get below a certain percentage, depending on what your crew skills are, then you just die. Uh, so the more crew, the more survivable a vehicle. So this has increased armor and also an increased amount of crew, which is kind of nuts uh, when you think about it. Uh, there, So this thing will be a lot more tanky uh, than a ton of the other American destroyers, meaning that it can put out more damage as it goes along. So the real question is, do you pick something like this over something like the Moffat? Uh, which one will be, you know, basically more worth it uh, for you? And that really just kind of comes down to, do you want something that's more survivable, or do you want something with more guns? And also, the fire director should be really nice on this thing. Um, technically, there wasn't too much uh, on it when it came to the dev server, it was pretty standard, but usually these late war um, or late World War II destroyers for the Americans have some pretty good fire directors on them. So once that goes in and once that happens, then you're going to have a hell of a time just annihilating stuff with the 127s, like having a, having a pretty decent time. The only problem, I suppose, with these American destroyers is they can go up against light cruisers and heavy cruisers a decent amount. Um, but at the same time, and mostly they can do really well against them uh, because they they have the multi-purpose guns the guns can fire he they can fire hevt and they can also fire ap shells so with the amount of fire that you're putting against other other machines you can target ammo racks on them and then just make them into a fireworks show like it works really really well for vehicles like this so uh, there, there isn't a downside uh, to American destroyers, really, apart from their torpedoes are maybe not the strongest, if you compare them to Japanese torpedoes, but they nerfed torpedoes um, a little bit ago, so it didn't really matter um, that much. They, they just don't have a weakness, these guys. Uh, they just do everything well. Um, I suppose they don't have very good secondaries uh, when it comes to taking on uh, ships, but that's really about it. Uh, if you haven't played through the American Blue Water fleet, I would highly recommend this. Because if you're a person who uh, enjoys naval, um, 
I think you owe it to yourself to enjoy the American destroyers, uh, which are the best in the game. I still like the British ones quite a lot, though, and I'm hoping uh, to see some of the British ships, which were kind of sat in the files um, soon. Uh, that would be really nice. But anyway, uh, that's the good old Frank Knox. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Forge, Siegebreak, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, E Love Goat, Pyman, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B Young, and also Sem Arslan, Wilkski, uh, Uncle Bean, Derek R, Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.